Hey everyone, welcome back to King's Quest V. So, continuing the great tradition of showing the different ways that you can die in the game, you might reasonably wonder, hey, okay, so it's nice that that eagle saves us from this uh, rock in the rock's nest if, uh, if we fed the eagle, but what happens if you come to this point and you didn't feed the eagle? Well, we're about to find out. Graham, look out. Now this part plays out pretty much the same. I mean, you can take the locket here if you want. It doesn't really matter because we're not going to survive this, obviously. Uh, nice birdie. Good birdie. <laughs> coochie coochie coo. Rip. Mustn't feed the animals. Yeah, um, it's a little, uh... I was going to say it's a little gruesome, but it doesn't really show anything. It's more just, it's more gruesome for the imagined, I mean, it sort of plays with your imagination. You kind of can picture exactly what happens. The game doesn't need to show it. And again, this is a family game. And you know, continuing that theme, I want to go back for a bit because one of my viewers made me aware of a way that you can die in this game that I was never aware of before. I never even knew about that. I'm going to go way back in time to... Um, Let's see, I guess, let's let's go here. So this is when we were in the dark forest. Now, remember, remember when I mentioned these hellish looking plants that literally look like they're growing out of hell? Um, I thought they were just window dressing and well, they kind of are, I mean, you can't really do anything useful with them, but they can kill you if you get yourself into an unwinnable situation here. How can you do that? Well, an easy way to do that is to toss these emeralds without putting the honey on the ground. If you throw an emerald there, just like before, the elf grabs it. You toss the second emerald. The elf comes here and grabs it. And if you throw the third emerald... Drat! Just missed him. Now, even at this point, the plants don't kill you yet. You can walk right up to them and, you know, they, they don't do anything. What you have to do now, if you want to see the plants kill you, is leave the screen and come back. So now... Uh-oh. It looks like Graham is having a vine time now. Now, I had never seen this before uh, in my life before a couple of days ago because I guess I just never, you know, I just never really tried this. I mean, I guess I did try throwing the emeralds without using the honey and then I realized, okay, you got yourself into an unwinnable situation by doing that because you can't win the game without the, if you don't have the emeralds anymore and you didn't catch the elf. But I never tried leaving the screen and then coming back here. So this is kind of the game's way of telling you, uh, you you can't win anymore, which is kind of nice. So you're not just kind of left wandering around uh, wondering why why can't I win? You can also have the same thing from these other plants over here. Uh, wait, sorry, not here. Now I need to go. I need to go way back to uh, here again. And somewhere I think, yeah, these plants right here. These plants will do the same to you if uh, if you walk by here after throwing the three emeralds without catching the elf. So so yeah, I never knew about that. So, big thanks to viewer uh, Fender178 for telling me about this one, because I I just never knew. It's just, you know, I, I thought I knew pretty much everything about this game, but there's, you know, there's still stuff like this that you can discover that, that you just, uh, or at least that I never knew about. And, yeah, you know, finding different ways to die is part of the fun of playing a Sierra adventure. I mean, that this is one of the reasons, again, I'm not, I've, I've harped in the past about how I don't like it, games where you can't die, it just seems a little contrived to me, and, you know, that's part of the reason for that. It's just, it's fun figuring out little ways like that that the game will kill you. It's, it, it actually reminds me, you know what this reminds me a bit of? Um, those, of you, those of you who've seen my Let's Play, well, my Let's Play, um, her crabbiness is Let's Play of King's Quest VI. 
I say my Let's Play because I was there with her, so it was kind of our Let's Play. Our Let's Play of, of King's Quest VI so on, her, on her crabbiness's channel. Um, she was trying to get something to happen where the Minotaur would, where Minotaur would kill Alexander uh, in the room with the tapestry, I think it was. Or was it? Or was it? No, I think it was actually... No, it wasn't in the room with the tapestry. It was uh, where you were supposed to view the tapestry with the hole in the wall. Anyway, you can die in that room. Like, the, the Minotaur will come and kill you in that room, but only if you don't have what you need there. If you're missing something that you need, then the game will kill you so that you're not left wondering, why can't I, um, you know, why can't I continue here? So this is kind of a similar idea. If you... If you can't escape from this forest, the game will kill you, but as long as you have what you need, the game will still let you keep going. So it's kind of an interesting way of uh, preventing you from, from bumbling around for the rest of your life wondering what you're supposed to do next. So if, if the game just suddenly kills you like that, that's probably a hint that you are missing something that, you, uh, that you'll need. So, yeah. So that's that. Again, thanks to Fender178 for telling me about this death. Let's now continue. Let's go back to the uh, regularly scheduled game. So we finished last time here at this boathouse, and we um, figured out that the, the man who lives in this house is so hard of hearing that even if we pound on the door like that, he won't hear us. But he will hear us if we ring that bell. You're still here! Now, obviously he can't hear us if we try to speak to him normally, but maybe, now that we have this conch shell, maybe we can use this as sort of uh, an earphone. Please help me, I need your help. Hey, I can't hear you. What's this? Now what were you wanting? My owl friend is hurt. He was wounded by the harpies. Wounded by the harpies, did you say? Well, bring him on into the house. I'll fix him right up. Good as new. Lay him on the bed there. These poultices should fix the little fellow up good as new. I'm feeling better already. Tell me, what was, what was in those poultices? My employer would be very interested in them. I guess his employer being Crispin. Hey, what was that? I said what was in those poultices. My employer would be interested in them. Gifts from the sea, lad. Gifts from the sea. Ain't nothing special. You just gotta know how to use them. I don't think he'd find them particularly interesting. I like this music, too. Now, son, what was it you were trying to tell me before? You was trying to tell me before? I was trying to find out where the wizard Mordax Island is. He kidnapped my family and is holding them hostage there. I must get to them before it's too late. Oh, I'm right sorry to hear about that. He's a nasty one, that Mordak. I wouldn't want to tangle with him. I tried to talk you out of going there. Except, I can see that you can't leave your poor defenseless family unaided. I can enlist someone who can lead you straight to his island. Follow me outside. I like how Cedric flies everywhere. It seems like that would probably be an awkward place to try to fly. Whistle. Pearl, this man needs your help. He needs you to lead him to Mordax Island. It's a real emergency. Mordak's holding his family hostage. It's been a while since we've seen a mermaid in King's Quest. I think we haven't seen one since King's Quest II. Pearl can't speak human talk, but she's agreed to help you. Just got on into your boat and follow her. Cedric and I want to thank you for all your help, Mr. Uh? Don't worry about who I am. You just get, over, get on over to that there island and take care of your family. Aye, aye, sir. We're off. Come on, Cedric. And enjoy this because this is your last view of something pleasant before the end of the game. Well, actually, no, that's not true. We'll see something very pleasant later on. A few hours later... Oh 
no, watch out for the rocks, Graham. Brace yourself, Cedric. That wasn't very... That wasn't a very skillfully executed boat landing. Help me, I'm caught! Oh, help! Are you alright, Cedric? Well, let me see. I'm fine, Graham. Just a bit ruffled is all. Alright, folks. Welcome to hell. Yeah, I mean, okay, this is Mordax Island. This is the last location of the game. Um, and it's not incredibly disturbing, but uh, some people have commented that, you know, they, they found some of the imagery here kind of disturbing. And it kind of... Uh, I can kind of see why thinking about it. Well, I guess I'll talk more about that in a bit. Let's take a look around what we have here. So, oh dear, now what? Poor Graham's boat has been dashed to pieces against the jagged rocks of Mordax Island and is now completely useless. I always find it odd, to me intuitively, when you put an exclamation mark and a question mark together. Intuitively, I always want to put the question mark at the end because it's still a question. I mean, to me, it seems like you would exclaim, now what, and then put a question mark at the end to turn it into a question. But I see most people put the question mark first and then the exclamation mark. I don't know if that's correct, if there, there's like a standard for that, or if I'm just wrong. Who knows? Anyway. We have here a dead fish. Another dead fish. All right. A bit shaken, Cedric anxiously takes stock of the, their unsure situation. What do we do now, Cedric? I hate to say this, Graham, but I don't like this place at all. I know what you mean, Cedric. All right, let's move on. So, you know... I get that they needed to make this place a little disturbing because I don't like this place. It's creepy. Uh, let me go ahead and actually save here. I'll just save here at the uh, at the snake statues for a second. Now, you know, I, I was thinking about some of this, and um, you know, even though this is a family game, they do try to sort of put uh, some some disturbing stuff here. And it can't be really horrifying because, you know, again, this 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 has to be something they can show to children. And I get that Mordak is evil, and so they need to portray him and his uh, home, if you will, as as being evil. And so they have to be kind of disturbing because he's the villain. Um, but there are some things here which which you know could be legitimately disturbing. Like uh, it reminds me a bit of the Land of the Dead in King's Quest VI. Remember that? Now, in King's Quest VI, the Land of the Dead is really... Again, it is kind of like hell. It, it literally is kind of like a hell. And I kind of remember thinking, is this really something for kids? Is this really something that goes into a family game? It's not super disturbing. I mean, it's not... Again, it's not really incredibly disturbing. I've seen much more disturbing things in my life, but... I don't like that kind of thing where they, they, you know, they try to creep you out. That's not, I know some people like that, but I, I just don't, I don't get that. Like, it's not, it's not my kind of thing. But on the other hand, I remember playing this game and thinking, like, when I saw these snake statues, I thought, those look really cool. And I, I remember thinking, if I ever own my own house, like, if I, if I have my own house, like, you know, kind of not like a suburban house, but like a house a little bit outside in the country with like a long driveway going up to it. I would want these snake statues here, just as kind of like a call out to King's Quest V. I would actually want to have these snake statues on my driveway, just because they look so cool. And yet, at the same time, the snakes are kind of disturbing. So, you know, it's kind of like... The human being has a desire for a certain degree of horror, a certain degree of, of something disturbing and terrifying. But not too much, you know, and different people have different degrees where they say, no, that's too much. I mean, for me, the, these snake statues are okay. Like, they, to me, they look kind of cool. But uh, there's some stuff where I just say, nah, man, I, I, I'm not into that. That's just, that's not cool. Anyway, sorry, I got a bit sidetracked there. Anyway, so, two monstrous statues of grotesque distorted serpents face each other across the narrow trail leading to Vortex Castle. What happens if we try to walk between them? That is what happens. The eyes have it. I don't know why they put... I mean, they put the word eyes in quotation marks as if it's a play on words, but it's not really a pun. It it literally is the eyes. It's not like it's not like a word that sounds like eyes. It literally is the eyes of the statues. Okay, so we can't just uh, walk through here. Can we 
Let's see, the giant figures can't be climbed without risking life and limb, and since they appear to be made of stone, can't be harmed. Okay. We can whack them with our hammer. That won't help with the stone serpents. All right. Whack them with the crowbar. No, nope, that doesn't help either. Now, what you're supposed to use is this brilliant crystal shard, which we got from uh, from Queen Isabella's um, crystal cave. That's also pretty awesome. <laughs> it actually... <laughs> I mean, again, I know it's kind of disturbing, but it, it, it just looks kind of awesome. It's, it's like really metal with their eyes just smoking like that. It's kind of, I don't know. Like I said, I get it. Sometimes stuff like that is cool, and sometimes it's, uh, sometimes it's not. All right, so let's see. Where are, we, where are we at here? So we are obviously, well, see, there's no way in. Let's turn back now. Come on, Cedric. Uh, why do you say there's no way in? I mean, there's a, there's a, a door right there. Why don't we just open the door? Let's go up to the door and open it. No, don't! Yeah, that that really got me the first time. The first time I saw that, or the first time that happened to me, because obviously it really looks like a step. It really looks like there's just like a threshold, or I don't know, a, I wouldn't exactly call it a porch, but we'll, I don't know what you call it, like a... It's not a porch or a patio, I guess just a doorstep here. It really just looks like, there, looks, looks like there's a step up here. But no, this is actually a gap. It's not, it really isn't apparent to me, it's not visually apparent to me that that's a gap. It really looks like just a step, but no, that's a gap. You can't walk, you can't walk across it, you'll, you'll fall in and die. Uh, but obviously what we do, contrary to Cedric's claim that there's no way in, we can just go around the side here. All right, what do we have here? See, dead end, let's go back now. No, I'll figure this out. So first of all, Cedric, come on, where would we go? Our boat is destroyed. We have no way of getting off this island now, so really, even if we went back, where would we go? But, uh... The twisted and formed shapes of the island's rocks seem to grow like strange weeds. So yeah, w there's nowhere to go back to, but also, there's a grate here. That's great. Let's go ahead and open the grate. Graham tugs hard on the grate, but soon finds it's rusted in place and can't be budged. Ooh, you need to tug harder, Graham. You need to tug until the, uh, until great things happen. So, yeah, it's not hard to figure out. Use the crowbar to pry it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and save here. You'll see why in just a second. Okay. Oh, I guess I need to use the hand here. All right. See if I look down. The open grate in the stone platform invites Graham's entry. All right, let's go ahead and head inside. You're crazy to go down to that dark hole. You don't know what's down there. Well, do you have any better ideas? No. Um, mind if I wait for you here? No, that's a good idea, Cedric. You be the lookout out here. Yes, I'll be the lookout. Be careful, Graham. And this is the Labyrinth. Now, as far as mazes and adventure games go, I don't think this is the worst one I've ever seen. I remember when I first played this game with my uncle, he said, you need to draw a map of this maze because otherwise you'll never find your way out. Well, I did find, I, I actually just, at 10 years old, I just kind of brute forced the maze. I just, you know, just clicked around randomly and 10 minutes later I found my way out of it. It's not that difficult. I mean, as far as mazes go, I can think of much worse, like just, Oh, okay. Uh, that's good that we ran into this guy. Uh, hold on, let's save here again. This is the Maze Dweller. So whom do we have here? A huge beast sporting a funny looking top knot bound in a crude hairpin on top of his head skulks in one dark corner of the labyrinth. You know, in retrospect, he reminds me a bit of Zippy the Pinhead. I'm not sure if he's supposed to. I didn't know who Zippy the Pinhead was when I first played this game, but the maybe I guess it's just the thing with the hair. Anyway, can we... Graham should watch his step around this ugly beast. Can we talk to him? Duh. Dink. Dink. Duh, 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 dink. Dink. Duh, dink, dink. Duh, 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 dink. Do you see other things as well? I just says this one. Okay. In the voice version, he he varies his statement slightly. Like sometimes he'll say, "Ding, ding, 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 da, 
Duke. But here he just says the same thing apparently every time. Well, let's go ahead and give him a big hug. Da Dink! Shouldn't mess with Dink, Graham. <laughs> I like how he puts Graham's hat on when he's done. Now, Dink is not evil. He, he kind of seems threatening, but he's I guess he's just, he's very simple-minded. So what's something that would entertain, a, you know, somebody with a child's mind, like a very simple-minded creature? Uh, we try giving him a fish. It makes no impression on the huge beast. Well, maybe that fish will make an impression if you poke him with it hard enough. No, it does not. Uh, the hammer will make an impression if you hit him with it hard enough. Nope. Tambourine? There we go. That's what he needed. All right, so he flips out fairly literally and drops upon the floor the beast's hairpin. So let's go ahead and grab that hairpin. We will need it, definitely. So so when you're here in the labyrinth, the first thing you want to do is find this guy and get his hairpin. I'll go ahead and save here again. And that's it. That's all we need to do here. Now we just need to find the exit from this maze. Now that's not easy to do. Um, I kind of have some idea of where it is in my head, so I'll try to get there, but I'll probably get lost a few times. But I mean, again, this this labyrinth, it's not that big. It really isn't. It's, uh, I mean, again, as, as I was saying, compared to other mazes from other games, like, I don't know, to cite a recent example, remember that maze from Innocent Until Caught? That thing was horrible. That was way worse. Oh, look, we're here already. Okay. There's a wooden door here. Perhaps it will lead into the castle. Let's go ahead and open it. Graham tries to open the wooden door, but it's no avail. It's securely locked. All right. Well, what do you do with a hairpin? Oh, it's it's a carved piece of bone with a sharp metal clip attached to it. Okay, that's nice. And Graham inserts the hairpin into the door's large keyhole and discovers to his amazement that it fits perfectly. Turning it ever so gently, he soon hears a soft click and the door is unlocked. By the way, I tried to do this several times as a kid. I tried to pick locks with, with hairpins like that. It doesn't work. It's not that simple. It, there's a little more technique that you need than that. Um, I'm not going to go into the details because I don't want to teach people... Well, I don't want to teach people how to pick locks, but I mean, I'm sure you, you can find it easily on the internet, the information about how to do it. Anyway, let's go inside. All right. We are out of the labyrinth. I'll go ahead and save again. Um, out of the labyrinth. Uh, we will need to go back in there later, but it won't be so bad the second time. You'll see why. Anyway, let's take a quick look around here. So we are in the, um, pantry of the wizard's kitchen. Graham doesn't see anything of use on the shelves. No. A cupboard catches Graham's interest. Ooh, adventure game Spidey Sense. Inside the cupboard, Graham's eyes fall upon a bag of dried peas. Okay. Nice how it doesn't describe anything else. It just says peas, just in case you weren't sure. Oh, yes, I take that. Reaching to the open cupboard, Graham retrieves the bag of dried peas. All right. So we have a bag full of round dried peas. All right, fair enough. All right, I think that's all we can do here. So let's continue. The perspective makes that a little difficult. Let's walk through here. I like this music. I think this is also the music that begins King's Quest VI. It is. I think, I'm pretty sure this is the exact same music that starts the opening sequence for King's Quest VI. And with good reason. If you've played King's Quest VI, you probably know the reason why. A fire burns hotly in the fireplace with something in the iron pot. Can we take the food? The stuff in the boiling pot doesn't look or smell too appetizing. All right. Um, I guess the, the main... Uh... I don't want to say attraction or feature, but the main presence in this room is obviously this uh, this lovely young girl with long black hair, olive skin, and flashing green eyes who laboriously scrubs the cold stone floor. Though wearing rags, her beauty nevertheless shines through. Well, let's give her something else to polish. Don't come near me! Leave me alone! I would never hurt you. I'd like to help you. Folks, if anybody ever tells you this, that's even more reason not to trust them. I don't believe you. You're probably one of them. I'm not. Believe me. Anybody who says believe me is not trustworthy. Believe me. Just go away, please. I don't want to talk to you anymore. Hmm. This woman has obviously experienced some very negative uh, things in her life. Let's walk up to her. 
Oh, okay. She actually just lets us walk right up to her without any... Without any... Oh, and now she just goes back to scrubbing. All right. Um, since the girl seems so frightened, Graham Compassion decides to leave her alone for now. Well, do we have anything that might interest the woman? Um, maybe she'd like a fish. Would you like something to eat, madam? Maybe you're hungry. Take that away from me. I don't want it. It's just a fish. It's not... It's not going to hurt you. All right. Would you like a hairpin? She doesn't want the hairpin. Okay. She likes her hair to be natural and wild. What about this locket? Wherever did you find my gold locket? I thought it was gone for good. I lost it on the island just after it was brought here by Mordak. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Tell me, who are you, and how did you come to be here? My name is Princess Cosima from the Kingdom of the Green Isles. My father, the king, employs a horrible vizier who befriended Mordek. When Mordek saw me, he immediately wished to marry me and bring me here. Naturally, I refused, and my father agreed with me but her refusal angered him so much that he stole me here anyway and put me to work as a scullery girl. He says he will never let me go, that a scullery girl I will remain until I agree to marry him. But the thought revolts me. What am I to do? Why not just marry him and then run away? Don't worry. I'm here to save my family from the wizard. He's got them here someplace imprisoned inside a glass bottle. If I can manage to rescue them, then I won't forget you either. I know the glass bottle you're talking about. It's in Mordak's laboratory upstairs. Oh, we're close now. Keep quiet about my presence. I think this will be the most difficult part of my journey. I may not survive it. I would never give you away, and I will help you in any way I can, kind sir. Just like a woman, give her some jewelry and suddenly she'll trust you and do anything for you. I, I'm sorry, I'm being somewhat sexist, I know. I'm just, I'm just being silly. Obviously not, women are not actually like that. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just being a jerk. By the way, who are you? I'm King Graham of Daventry. I think I know where that is. It's very far from my home, though. Oh! Don't worry. Somehow, I'll get you home again. But first, I've got to save my family. Yes, well, I'll stand by you, King Graham. I'll help you if I can. Thanks. I may need it. You will, Graham. You will, and soon. Well, I'd better get back to work. And you should keep out of sight. How does he keep out of sight? He's standing here in the open. He can't really stay out of sight unless he hides somewhere, in which case... Aye, aye, lady. He can't stay out of sight unless he hides behind these barrels or something, and then we're never going to finish the game if we just stick around here. All right, so yeah, so this is the kitchen, which is apparently disgusting. It is an untidy mishmash of dirty pots, jars with identified cons, rags, and sort of junk. Why, why don't you keep the place clean, Kasima? I mean, if you're, if you're such a, a virtuous lady, then why don't you keep a clean house? All right, um... I'll go ahead and save here. Whoop. Caps lock. I accidentally turned on caps lock. All right, I think that's the video for now. So, um, most of you know, and those of you who don't know can probably guess, we're pretty close to the end of the game now. We might even finish the game in the next video. If not, then I think uh, two videos tops might even be as, as little as one video so we'll see what happens anyway that's it for now thanks for watching everyone i will talk to you all later have a great day or evening or night or time of day wherever you are and uh yeah till next time bye bye for now